What the heck is DevOps? I swear, every single time I used to hear this term, I'll just be like a deer in headlights. Like, wait a second, you're trying to tell me that you have specific people who code, then specific people who test, then specific people who deploy and maintain the pipelines, and then you have specific people who interact with the end users and gather, you know, bug reports, bug fixes, and feature requests, and things of that nature. I, I do all of those things. So what does that make me? Am I a DevOps engineer now? Am I just, is that part of the full stack development process? I, I didn't know. I was like, please explain this to me like I'm five because it's, I don't get it. I work in a small team. We all wear all of the hats. We all do everything. Well, supposedly that methodology is called DevOps and DevOps is exactly what we're going to be discussing today. All right, hey, my name is Forrest, welcome back. So DevOps, by definition, is a set of practices, tools, and a cultural philosophy that automate and integrate the processes between software development and IT operations teams, hence the term DevOps. Or as I like to define it, it's how developers operate. Because again, if you're working by yourself or working a part of a small team, you do all of these things. So you've probably seen this before, and it actually starts right here at Plan. This is where you crack open Jira or Asana or Utrack and plan out your project. The reason this is an infinity symbol though, even though it does start right here, is because once we go through coding and building and testing and release and deploy, this is CICD, and operating and monitoring, this is, you know, obviously everything with the end users, well, you get the feedback and based on that feedback, you go back to the planning phase and coding those and building those and testing those and you get the idea. With that feedback being, of course, you know, bugs that were missed or feature requests or what have you. It is quite literally a never ending loop, which is, 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 is good in a way that, well, I guess you'll always have a job if it's a never ending loop. So that's a good thing, right? Anyway, um, once it's all planned out, you move on to the coding phase. And this isn't just about sling and code though, although that is a big part of it. It's where the build of your entire pipeline that is used throughout this entire process really begins. You're utilizing Git for version control in the form of GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket. So when you inevitably break your code base, you have previous versions of it to revert back to. It's okay, we've all been there. <laughs> Maybe more than one time. Uh, that's neither here nor there though. And of course, in these platforms like GitHub have pull requests built in and code review tools to review said pull requests and merge. And yeah, like previously mentioned, obviously you are coding in this code section. <laughs> Using IDEs and code editors like anything in the JetBrains suite, their CICD product, Team City Pipelines, is actually the sponsor of today's video, or at least a portion of it. So, but that's neither here nor there, we'll get to that in a sec. After coding, we hit the build phase because, well, when we push our code to our verse control system, before it actually deploys, well, it's all, it, it's got to build properly. So our code gets compiled, or for talking about interpreted languages like JavaScript, it's where our code gets prepared for execution. Hmm. Execution. I'd like to execute JavaScript in a different definition of the word. Anyway, uh, sorry about that. Uh, this is where tools like Gradle and Maven and, and PM come into play. They, this is where they do the heavy lifting. They build the software. Automated tests kick in here too. Unit tests, integration tests, system tests, you name it. This is where the, all of that's happening. The idea is to ensure that the code base, every last piece of it, works as expected and works together. Uh, wait, did you not write tests during the code phase? Oh, you thought this test was where you write tests. No, 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 no code section is where you write tests. This is different. This is for when we have everything deployed to the testing branch for the Quabity Ashwins team to test the actual application as it sits. Quabity, Quabity Ashwins. You write tests in the code, the build runs those automated tests ensuring that it passes in order to, you know, pass the build. And this is Quabity Ashwins. So they, the quality, assurance, quality assurance team, acts as if they're a real user. Going through the motion of how your application is intended to work as well as how it's not necessarily intended to work. They throw everything in the kitchen sink at it to see what they can break. They try to break it. They find bugs. Maybe there's a, a workflow that's a little bit weird or not a workflow, but like a flow, like this button, this button, this button, this button, where it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Anyway, if it ain't working right, they'll let you know. 
which is the whole point of them and because you want them to find the issues before like the actual end user finds the issues. And you know how we talked about DevOps being the automation and integration between teams, the development team and the IT operations team. And you know, the test quality assurance team is also in there somewhere. Well, this is the first real example of that. It's really been all dev teams so far. The dev team plans it, they code it, they build it, and then, you know, again, those are the written tests as well. But then, I mean, you do test it in a way. Like, you can have, like, three different servers that this app is running on. You can have development server, the testing server, and then the production server. So maybe you're testing it a bit on development server. But, you know, in theory, once, once everything is successfully built in your automated test run, you have to come back here and plan whatever feedback you get from over here. So you test it a bit, make sure nothing crazy is going wrong. But then once it's over on the testing server, so like the testing branch would then deploy to the testing server using CICD, that is where quality control, the quality assurance team would then test it and give you all that feedback. So basically right now as a dev team, you're passing the baton over to the um, qual quality Ashwitz team. And then again, you're looking back and seeing the baton coming from the IT operations team for feedback from your users, from, um, you know, performance metrics and things of that nature from your uh, code review tool or whatever term sonar cube and those types of things that report code smells and things of that nature. All of that, like, like you're back to planning and <laughs> you do it all over again. And now after testing, we go to release, but it's actually difficult to talk about really anything from build, test, release to deploy without talking about continuous integration and continuous deployment. That's where the sponsor Team City Pipelines comes into play because they have a new approach to CICD that when they say offers blazing fast pipelines to optimize your development flow, they ain't lying. Plus it is very, very pretty. But we'll build an actual pipeline here in a second. Let me show you kind of how it all works within our DevOps. CICD, so the pipeline will be utilized for the development team, for the QA team, for the release, and for deployment, which this is production. And you can kind of see it over here. Just pretend that there's a testing branch right here. This would be your Git flow. Your feature branch, to your development branch, to your testing branch, to your release branch, to your master branch, which is your production branch, and that's deploy right here. So the way it works is that when you code and you're working on a feature based on a task that you had already planned out, will you create a feature branch off of the development branch right here. And in that feature branch, you build out that feature. And then once it's all good, you will submit a pull request for a code review to be merged back into the development branch, just like all of your other team members. So all of this needs to ensure that it integrates together properly and builds properly. And that is what continuous integration does. And that is building the code. And you also, on the development branch, have it deployed to a development server so you as the software engineer can see how everything works together in the actual application, running on a server and not just locally or in your container. And then once all said and done and it's ready for test, you will then merge that code from the development branch to this, you know, again, imaginary QA or testing branch, which will then utilize CICD again to build run all the tests, make sure it's all successful, and then deploy it so that the quality assurance team can actually run it on the QA server. And then the same thing, once it's all said and done, will happen once it's merged over to the release branch where beta testers or what have you will test it out. And then the same thing will happen once it gets merged over to the master branch or the production branch. And that's this deploy right here. So every single step of the way right here from test to release to deploy is effectively the same, just refining the process throughout. So let's take a look at how it actually works in the real world, utilizing the CICD tool, Team City Pipelines. After signing up to the free beta using the link in the description, I can connect my GitHub account to Team City, which will populate all of my repositories here. And actually, let's make this dark mode real quick so we don't blind ourselves. And I need a pipeline for this HTML and Java project right here. So I'm going to create it. And if you're a YAML pro or utilizing docs that use YAML, you can do all of that here. So that's convenient and useful, but I'm going to use the visual editor because it's uh, pretty and easy to use. First, I am going to build a backend. So I'm going to name this build backend. 
very clever. And this is a Maven project. So what we're going to do is utilize what Team City Pipelines has integrated, and that is, like I said before, their self-tuning, if you will. They have very intelligent features throughout this entire platform. And as you can see right here, we can convert to a Maven build step, and that's exactly what I wanna do. We can run it in Docker, utilize autocomplete, or you can paste in your own Docker file here. Back to parallel tests, we can actually easily run these in three batches, four batches, five batches to make everything faster without changing any code. And whatever you wanna run it on, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, you can do that here. But that's all preference case dependent. Let's build the actual pipeline. We'll add three new jobs, quality gate backend, deploy, and build frontend, setting the dependencies for each to ensure it's a linear path, and that it can only deploy once everything is successfully built. And we can see it running here alongside any prevalent information, how it's passing, what's running at the time, the build log, or we can just say, hey, I know this is gonna pass, so let me just come over here and play some 2048. All right, I'm actually gonna zoom out a little bit there. The build is successful, and Team City Pipelines actually gives us smart optimization features after the build telling us where we can optimize our pipeline like this. I'm doing the same exact build where I reuse the jobs, which as you can see, saved 95% of the original duration because it's reusing what we've already built. And that's that. For more information, click on the link in the description where you can also try it out for free in beta as one of the first users ever of Team City Pipelines. So we've gone through the testing branch and server, the release branch and server, and the production branch and server. And now that it's deployed, we're passing the baton over to the IT operations team. So that way they can operate and monitor the application. And well, technically, technically that's not necessarily true. Technically, I mean, we got a little bit ahead of ourselves. They do typically oversee the deployment to prod, but that's whatever. It, Somewhere around here is where that baton's getting past the IT operations team. They operate by keeping the lights on. Any outages that occur, they have to handle. Oftentimes, not single-handedly, they'll have to work with the dev team if it's on their side of things. They also manage performance, like load balancing and resource allocation. But it's not just about keeping the lights on and, and making sure everything's working as it should. They also monitor the application's health, the server performance and resource usage. They must track how users interact with the application to see if there are any pain points. And using that data, they identify, you know, areas for improvement or issues that the user's facing. They analyze logs. And again, ensure that everything's running smoothly. It, it, it provides real-time feedback on how the application is performing in the wild. Yeah, that was the uh, monitor section of this. And then right here, it should really say feedback. Because all of this, you then have to provide feedback back to the dev team so that they can plan it properly. And thus completes the loop, the infinity symbol. So this feedback will be user feedback, operational feedback, analytical data. And that's the end, in a way. It's not, like I said, it is an infinity symbol, so you're always working because that feedback then, again, goes back to the planning phase to jot down new feature requests, bug fixes, and performance improvements, and start coding again, and building again, and testing again, and well, you get the idea. This infinity loop of plan, code, build, test, release, deploy, operate, monitor, and feedback is DevOps. It keeps the development and operational processes in constant motion, adapting and improving with each cycle. That's it. DevOps in a nutshell. Again, I'm Farst. I hope you enjoyed this video enough to subscribe to the channel or maybe just enough to like the video. Share it with a friend if you think they need to learn a little bit more about DevOps. Don't worry, we're, we're not, if you were sent this video, we're not insulting you, we're helping you. <laughs> if you did any of that, I'd greatly appreciate it. I do really genuinely hope that this video helped. That's why I make this content. If not, well, sorry you wasted your time. <laughs> Until next time, y'all have a good one.